our lesson uh, from this morning. Um, new beginnings under God with uh, the theme of really hungering and thirsting after the word of God. Uh, and so we're going to continue uh, in that way to encourage you tonight the importance of our seeking God's word in every aspect of our life. Okay. And so uh, we're going to take a few moments to, to do that, to encourage your hearts, uh, the importance of what uh, that means to us and how it will build our faith. Uh, our growth, as Brother Merv mentioned earlier, is paramount in this Christian life. Things that don't grow will die. Is that right? And uh, that's not what we are serving God for. We want to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Is that all right? Amen. Amen. Praise God. I want to ask you to turn to two passages of Scripture and hold. I want you to mark Nehemiah 8 and hold, wait for me. We'll get to that at the end, okay? First off, we're going to go to Psalm 119, the 119th division of Psalms, and we'll start with um, verse 129, and we're going to review the first four and then highlight the last four, um, for tonight's study. Uh, as we talk this morning about hungering and thirsting after God's word, I want to continue that thought tonight and why that's important. There are many ways in which you can do that. Uh, we talked about moving from a, a discipline, a, a, a process of discipline to devotion and how you get to devotion uh, where uh, we are doing things because we love to and uh, we want to move to a point where we love reading the word of God. It's, and when we don't read it, it's something wrong with our day. When, I'm, when I get caught up in my hustle and bustle and I look and it's time, and I, man, my day messed up if I didn't do no read. I'm telling you. And uh, 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 one of the things that has helped me, let me just share with you, is that when I f first began trying to um, understand the importance of, of hungering and thirsting after God's word, and for me, it works better in the morning before I start my day rather than in the evening, but you work that however you want to. For me, if I don't start out right, it's going to be crazy. So I, I, I prefer to uh, do a devotion of some kind in the morning. That just sort of helps my day. Um, and let's say you get up at 6 a.m. normally to go to school or to work or what have you, get the kids ready. Uh, you don't have to start out as a Greek and Hebrew scholar. You don't have to. It doesn't have to be that deep. Okay, um, you can start out with 10 minutes. So if you get up at 6, maybe you get up at 10 minutes to 6. Read the Word of God for 5 minutes. Pray for 5 minutes. Start some Paul. And then before you know it, you get 15 minutes. And down the road, it'll turn into 30 minutes. Okay, and that's how you kind of build a, a discipline for that. You, 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 work, you work through it. And so uh, that might help somebody tonight as you grow to get an appreciation of the word. That was our main focus this morning is to uh, develop an appreciation for the word of God. And that was where we found in Psalm 119 at verse 129. Okay, by now you should be at Psalm 119. 
Okay. All right. Everybody should say amen, right? Because you're there. All right. Okay. And um, uh, they also provided a way of introduction to this chapter. It is one of the most fascinating chapters of Scripture. There's 176 verses. One of my favorite chapters of Scripture uh, because in all of the 176 verses, uh, you will find in each paragraph something that will uh, and not only encourage your hearts, but help you deal with any aspect of your life. And you would think that in all of those verses, you would be able to find that. And God has p- provided it. What particularly caught my attention some years ago is when I noticed the chapter breakdown of Psalm 119. And it's a very fascinating breakdown because each set of verses, which are every eight verses in this chapter, starts with a letter of the Hebrew alphabet. So if your Bible, right at the top of each verse, it starts another uh, uh, section of eight verses, you will see the Hebrew alphabet word. In our text tonight, we're at uh, the 17th letter of the Hebrew alphabet, P-E, all right, on the top. Does everybody see that? Does everybody have a Bible that has that? And then 137, you see the Hebrew letter. That would be letter 18. 145 starts uh, with uh, O-O-P-H. And by the time you get to the 22nd letter, you will have finished the chapter. And, and it prompted me to look at why eight verses. Each of those letters of the Hebrew alphabet is separated by eight verses. You, we got eight verses in our text tonight. Right under that, you have another set. Under that, another set, and so forth and so on, and the chapter is divided amongst that. I shared this morning with um, the church a few examples of eight and why eight is important. And, 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 and in this text is important um, for what I've already shared with you. But numbers in the scripture have significance. Okay? We know that the number seven represent what? Completion. All right? And perfection. Okay? The number three represents resurrection or restoration. Jesus rose on the third day. Elijah laid on the widow of Zarephath's son, how many times? Three times, and after the third time, he rose from the dead. Okay? Number three represents restoration or resurrection. Okay? So in our text tonight, the number eight represents a new beginning, a new thought. Okay? Uh, uh, I'll give you a few examples. I, I'll give you some different ones that I gave this morning. Uh, the New Testament was penned by eight men. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, James, Peter, Jude, and Paul. Abraham had eight sons. Uh, the, the Genesis 8 represents the start of a new world. Eight souls were saved by water. It's recorded in Genesis chapter 8. Okay, In uh, the Old Testament, uh, we have new beginnings uh, from the Feast of Booths or the Feast of Tabernacles uh, where uh, Israel was set up as they traveled in the wilderness for 40 years a temporary booths uh, as they celebrated God's provision for his people. Uh, the celebration concluded on the seventh day, and the eighth day uh, was significant as it ended this festival with an opportunity to commemorate God's special relationship with his people as they moved into a new chapter or a fresh start in 
their lives. Jesus' first sermon that we have recorded, the Beatitudes, there are eight of those. We can do this from this time till tomorrow morning, but I won't do that to you. Okay. Uh, those of you who are um, uh, the, uh, would, would know about the, uh, the watch that uh, Israel utilized in the Old Testament, it started out, according to Judges 7 and 19, as si uh, uh, six equal parts, Judges 7 and verse number 19. By the time we get to the New Testament, it is moved to eight parts. Again, the significance of eight, new beginning, new start. We get that in Matthew 14, 25, and Mark 6, 48. The night watch included sunset to 9 p.m. Second watch, 9 p.m. to midnight. Third watch, midnight to 3 a.m. Fourth watch, 3 a.m. to sunrise. That was the night watch. That's four. The day watch concluded of four watches. The first was sunrise to 9 a.m. Second watch, 9 a.m. to noon. Third watch, noon to 3 p.m. Fourth watch, 3 p.m. to sunset for a total of eight. Boys were circumcised on the eighth day. Amen? But Christ in his word, uh, throughout all scripture, move, was moving to a point of the circumcision of the heart. So no longer was the eighth day so necessary as much as the fact that our circumcision now would come through a spiritual means, and that would be the circumcision of the heart, and we get a new beginning in life. 2 Corinthians 5 and verse number 17, the Bible says that if any man be in Christ, he's what? A new creature, new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, what? All things become new. We have a newness of life in Christ. So that celebration of circumcision now moves to a circumcision of the heart, and we become new creatures or creations in Christ. Y'all still there? Y'all still with me? Okay. So uh, 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 I can move on and go on and on and on, but that's enough for now. Thank God you have uh, picked up uh, the uh, information with that and understand another level of significance with another number, in this case, the number eight. And because of that, our text gives us eight verses that we will review for four and then highlight the last four to finish up the 17th Hebrew alphabet uh, for tonight, okay? So the psalmist is trying to get us to understand uh, that when we read and get into the scriptures, uh, we get an illumination of what God wants us to know. We get light from his word. Verse number 129, your testimonies are wonderful. Therefore, my soul keeps them. Number verse 130, the entrance of your word gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. Okay? Now, Light is significant because Jesus said, I am what? The light of the world. He that followeth me should not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. That's John 8, verse number 12. So sin is depicted with darkness. Righteousness is dependent with light. Reading God's word gives us light so that we can now live a righteous and holy life, okay? So that becomes critical. So we get illumination from that. Uh, I opened verse 131. I opened my mouth and panted, for I longed for 
your commandments. We get into a word now that I'd like to use, a desperation for the word of God. We as Christians need to be desperate to learn and know what God has to say to us. It should be that important to us that we are desperate for it. I get illumination, and now I just can't wait. I can't help but to see what God has for me. He says that I opened my mouth and panted, for I longed for your commandments. When Brother Allen leads songs, sometimes he has led us before in this song. Uh, we find it in verse uh, the number, uh, page number 13 in our supplemental book as the deer panteth. Anybody remember hearing that song before? As the deer panteth, okay? And we find that in Psalm 42, verses 1 and 2, from which this song has come uh, for our edification. As the deer panteth for water, so my soul longs for thee. We just read that. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship you. Isn't that what the psalmist is saying here? For I opened my mouth and panted, for I've longed for your commandments. We long for a lot of things, a lot of things we desire and want. But we as Christians should have a desperation to the point where we long and hunger and thirst for the word of God. It is what we move and live and have our very being, okay? Uh, one of the interesting things about a deer that pants for his water, the deer seeks water for several reasons, okay? One of the reasons that the deer pants for the water, not only to quench your thirst, okay, but in uh, getting that water, he can, the deer can swim. And in swimming, his scent is lost in the water. So the enemies, the, the animals of prey that are ready to attack the deer, lose it because they can't pick up the scent. And what does that mean for us? It's that when we come to the living God and, and, and seek the living water of Jesus Christ, he provides for us too protection from the enemy. And so this parallelism here where the deer or the panting for God is also significant for us that we should do the same thing because not only do we want to be Quenched, our thirst quenched. We want protection too. The Bible says, blessed are they that do what? Hunger, what? And thirst after what? Righteousness, for they shall be filled. That becomes significant. So desperation for the word of God. I was once talking to a couple people from another congregation, and he was saying, Brother, Brother Smith, I, I don't uh, know if we're being fed at this congregation. I said, well, I don't know that. I'm not there. Well, let me ask you a question. Is it that you not getting fed, or is it that you don't want to eat what's being cooked. <laughs> and I said this with them. Sister Christine, I shared this. I said, listen, we are in a generation now where folk today would not have survived in my house, okay, because you ate what was cooked. Folk now especially kids, you cook something? Mama, what you cook? Well, I don't want that. Can I go make what? You going to go, no, you're not going to make, because that's for the weekend. You're not cooking nothing 
different than what I cook. What your grandmama tell you? You eat what was cooked or what? Go to bed hungry. It wasn't no, you going to make something else. After I done cooked all day, you going to eat what I cook or don't eat nothing. Yes, sir. And so I shared with this, uh, this person, you got plenty of word going on, just like the kids have plenty of food in the house and act like they're hungry just because they won't eat what's being cooked. I said, I don't know for sure, but maybe just think about it and pray about it. Maybe there's plenty of food being given, but maybe you're not eating. Just think about it, okay? We want to be uh, able to take on God's word and digest it into our lives. There's some things that God has said to us that we don't like either, do we? There's some things we get chastised and things that we don't like that, but we know is good for us, is right, okay? We, don't have, we may not like it. Yeah, you eat them living in onions and, and rice. You may not like it, but you're going to eat it if you don't want to go hungry. Okay? You ain't going to always have hamburgers and french fries every day. Amen walls and electric lights. Okay. 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 So it becomes important to, to know that. Let's look at verse... Number one, uh, let's look at uh, we just read. Uh, let me read ver verse 132. Look upon me and be merciful to me as your custom is toward those who love you. Look upon me, be merciful unto me, and show me favor as is your way to those who love your name. You are accustomed to taking care of those who love your name who love your word, continue to do that. Verse number 133, okay? Order or direct my steps by your word. Amen. Can the church say amen on that one? Okay, okay. And let no iniquity have dominion over me. You know the beauty of this verse? Not only does God direct our steps, he direct our stops. Listen to that now. He direct our stops. Because there's sometimes we're getting ready to get in some craziness and God stops it. And you are thankful that he does. Because you're about to go into uh, some mess. So he, we want him to direct our steps and our stops. Deliver me from evil. This is what the disciples' prayer was, okay? So we want God to direct our steps and direct and be in control of our stops. No, let no iniquity have dominion over me. We can get into some iniquity sometimes. Sometimes we plan the iniquity. Sometimes we don't, okay? Either way, God, stop it. Defeat me in that, okay? I'm up to no good, and I know it, and I'm trying to get away with something. And God said, I no. Nope, not happening. And then you realize, God, I'm sure glad you stopped me from that. Because I was about to mess up some stuff here. Okay, okay, amen. Redeem me from the oppression of man that I may keep your precepts. You know that there are some people out to get you sometimes. They, they want to take you down. Okay? Sister Diane, the verse says, redeem me from the oppression of man. There are some people that want to oppress you and make life hard for you. Kids call them haters. He just hating on me. A whole bunch of haterade. Haters in the house. And the psalmist says, Lord, 
Those people who have plotted against me, who are out to get me, please don't let them have dominion over me. And I could keep your law and your precepts. Boy, what a blessing. Boy, 134. Goodness gracious. That is great. When we get oppressed by others, folk on your job, folk in your family, this is a verse for you. You pray this one. Amen. 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 Uh, verse 135, make your face shine upon your servant and teach me your statutes. Lord, I don't want to be hooked on phonics. I want to be hooked on the Bible. Help me, somebody. I want to be hooked on the Bible. Okay? It's great to know phonics and phonetic spellings and all of that. Be hooked on that so you can, you know, talk and write papers and all that. But at the end of the day, I want to be hooked on the Bible. Amen? Amen. Be hooked on that. Uh, and verse number 35. Uh, uh, make your face shine upon your servant and teach me your statutes. Verse 136, rivers of water run down my face because men do not keep your law. I was crying a couple times the last couple of weeks because all of this Supreme Court stuff and abortion pills and all of this stuff going on, Mark. Okay, laws changing all over the place. Had me crying. Okay, the psalmist says, Lord, my face, rivers of tears run down my face because of what's happening in society. And some of this stuff ought to make you cry. What people are doing to the word of God in our society. Rivers of water run down. This ain't no sniffle cry. This is a crying, a painful set of tears that are coming down, that are becoming law. Rivers of water run down my eyes because men do not keep your law. It ought to break your heart. In the past couple of weeks, I have not been in a good mood. Uh, I want to look at the news so I can see what's going on, but then I look at it, I get mad. <laughs> I, I, I don't want to be out of touch, D.D., but then when I hear that stuff, man, I want to throw something at the TV. Because this stuff is getting more and more crazy every day. Christians, at some point, we need to stand up and do something. Just letting stuff happen right up under our nose. And we think because we got divine and he has allowed church to be a central business, we okay. And that's good. Praise God for that. But what, what when he don't get elected, reelected? And the next governor decide church, church is not an essential business. And what that going to do for us? Okay. We, we need to understand. Be informed. Informed. Informed voters. And know who you are electing. Because you don't. Then you better pay attention. You better ask somebody. Okay. All right. Amen. We good? So I ask you to turn to Nehemiah 8. We'll finish that, finish here, okay? Give me a few more minutes. Y'all at Nehemiah 8, okay? Um, this is a tremendous chapter. I don't have time to break it all down. I'm going to just highlight a couple of verses. But here is what is going on. The people are at a hunger for God's word. And they ask the, um, the uh, priest to get Ezra. We need Ezra here. <laughs> okay. So they demanded for Ezra, uh, the scribe, to bring the book of the law of Moses 
which the Lord had commanded Israel. That's in verse number one. So Ezra the priest brought the law before the assembly of men and women and all who could hear and understand on the first day of the seventh month. Okay. Then he read from it in the open square and was in front of the water gate from morning to midday. So remember the, remember I shared with you a few minutes ago, the day started at 6 a.m. Midday would be what? 12 noon. How many hours is that? Six. How many hours is that? Six. So he stood reading the word for six hours. Six hours. We have trouble Six minutes. <laughs> we struggling, Brother Rodney. It's six hours. This man is reading the word. Six hours before the men and women and those who could understand and the ears of the people could understand uh, and the ears of the people were attentive to the book of law. They wasn't sleeping. I know some of us on medication. I know some of us have uh, narcolepsy, okay, I, and that's not making fun of anybody, but these people stayed up for six hours while he was reading. That's in the text. You see that? And they were attentive, okay? So Ezra the scribe stood at the platform and, and made, uh, they was made for his purpose. They made him, up, made him something to prop him up. And all these guys in verse 4, which I am not going to try to uh, pronounce, okay? But those, his boys, were there. We go to verse 5. Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people, and for, uh, for he was standing above all the people, and when they opened it, all the people stood up. They stood up while he read for six hours. I'm going to just let that marinate for a while, okay? I'm going to pause for dramatic effect. Stood for six hours while he was reading. Not only were they standing, these people were shouting. These people were having a hallelujah time. Mark, how do you know? And Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, then all the people answered, amen, amen. If your, 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 your Bible should have capitals on those two amens with explanation points, quotations, which mean them people was into it, excited about the reading of the word while lifting their hands. And they bowed their heads and worshiped the Lord with their faces to the ground. I mean, these people, you, you ain't seen church till you know what's happening here. Okay? Uh, so they read distinctly from the book of the law, that's verse 8, and gave sense and helped them to understand the reading. These people were learning and understanding the word. They wanted this to happen. Ezra pr preached for six hours. Okay, turn to uh, look at verse number 13. Okay, this is tremendous. Verse 13. Now the second day. Why is that significant? Because this is the next day. Okay, this is the next day. All right. What you have here is that the people gathered to Ezra to order uh, and to understand the words of the law. So this is what they did. Now, everybody, everybody listen now. He, pre he preached today, and the next day they showed up at his house. And wanted some more, Brother Cooks. 
the next day. Okay, let me just bring it home. Mark preaches two sermons. Bang. All right? Monday is Mark's day off. He at home in his house coat, relaxing. But the church shows up at his house. Ring the doorbell. Janine comes to the door. What's going on? What, is something happened? What? No. We just showed up, Janine. We want to know if Mark want to preach some more. And so this is a text. The next day, Mark, can you come out and preach some more? We want to hear some more word. The next day, you preached on Sunday two times. And then Monday, they show up to your house on your day off. Let us in. Janine, go make some coffee and breakfast and donuts. Mark, can you come out in your backyard and preach some more? That's what they did. The next day, Sunday, two sermons wasn't enough. Monday, his day off. The church shows up. I'm just trying to, I'm trying to, I'm trying to get you to understand this thing. The church shows up, Ted. You got the songbooks. And we're going to have church again on Monday. Mark, do you have some more word for us on Monday? This is where these people were. Okay. Now, I ain't telling y'all to go there on Monday to mess with the man. I'm just trying to make a point that the text is making. Okay? The text says they wanted some more. What are we talking about? Hunger and thirsting after God's word. That's what we're doing. That's what we're talking about. They couldn't get enough. Lord, help us to get to a point where Man, we just can't get a never give enough of the word. Just can't get enough of it. Just can't get enough of it. Okay? When we get to that point, man, that's a hunger and thirst. And the more you hunger and thirst, the more God's going to fill you. And the more he fills you, you're going to hunger and thirst. Okay? You don't get full and don't want no more. You get full and want some more. Because these people was full six hours. And then come back the next day wanting some more. Woo! Lord, help us. Okay? That we can develop that kind of hunger and thirst for God. We thank you, Lord, for this lesson. May it encourage our hearts and help us to know how you want us to pant for your word as the deer panteth. We long to worship you, Heavenly Father. May we get to that desire in our lives so we are truly moved and encouraged by your word that you can direct our steps and direct our stops. What a blessing we have in your word. May it bless our hearts and help us uh, as we go through this week and the days to come. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Savior's invitation. Hear the word of God. Without faith it is impossible to please God. Hearing the word of God generates a faith. Uh, without faith, uh, we can't please God.